Okay, I think we are good to go. So please welcome our friend Chris Adolf with uh, his talk, whose title is Swift and C. Is this better? Yeah. Cool. So I don't have any slides, actually. There was just a joke slide. Um, I also don't have any code prepared. So what we're going to do today is some live programming and looking at how C and Swift interact. So I do have Xcode. We're going to make a new project. And we're going to do quick sort in Swift. Okay, so let's run this. This is a, a command line Mac app. I hope you can also, uh, let's make this a little bit bigger. Yeah, it prints hello world. So what I want to look at is how to work with C APIs in Swift. And this is actually really easy if you do easy things and you make it also, can also make it very complicated and we'll do both today. So let's start by, um, before, before we start with anything, so we're going to use the quick sort from the C standard library. In general, this is a bad idea. There's built-in sorting functions in Swift and you should use them because they're optimized and they're very nice to work with. This example is just as an example of how to work with a C API. So don't use this version of quick sort. Okay, let's uh, make an array and sort it. So we're going to make an array numbers and we're going to put some numbers in there. Uh, 17 and 3 maybe. So normally in Swift you would do something like this. You can sort the numbers and print it. So hopefully this works. Okay, this works. Now, <laughs> so basically we're done. Like functionality wise we're done. The other thing you can do, this is also important to have a look at, uh, is to do, to do something like this. Um, so you can say sort in place, and this modifies the array. Uh, in this case, we get an error. And you cannot read this probably, but it says, let's see if I can zoom in. Now the zooming doesn't work. It says changes, change let to var. So if you press enter, it changes it to var, and now you can sort in place. So this sort of changes the original array. So if we do this, after this call, numbers will be sorted. Cool. Let's delete the hello world. Okay, now we're going to make it a little bit more complicated and we're going to use the C function. So we're going to write, let's change this back to let, and let's write Q sort. So this is the one we want to use, the first one. Let's see if it autocompletes. Okay. Uh, what is this? Unsafe mutable point of void, int, int, unsafe point of void, unsafe point of void, and there's some, uh, even some stuff after that. Um, this is complicated. So what we can do in Swift, so we can use all these functions, they're there for us, but the types are imported in a sort of funny way. So what we can do is say man q sorts, this is very old school, and we can look in the C standard library. And if we scroll down a bit, I'll make it a little bit bigger. Here we see the q sort function. So we have to read, start reading at the void. This one. So this is the return type of the QSERT function. This says it doesn't return anything. So that's the first hint. What's happening here, this quick sort is also modifying the original array. So the QSERT function takes one parameter uh, as the first parameter, and that's a void pointer to base. And this is sort of the C, um, way of saying this is um, an array and anything can be in there. That's why it's a void pointer. So it's a pointer to the first element of the array. And because we don't really know what's in there, it's void. Normally, if you would have an integer array, you would say int pointer to base, but this is a void pointer because it can be anything. Then the second parameter is nil. So this already gives it away a little bit. This is the number of elements. If you read further in the documentation, they explain it a bit more clearly. So it's the number of elements in the array. That's how C arrays work. You have to have a, a, a pointer to the first element and then a number of elements. And then the third parameter is the width. So this is the size of a single element in memory. 
because if you iterate, you have to increase by the width. And then the third parameter is a comparison function. So the way to read this is, uh, it's, I'll highlight the line, it's this line. So it says, there's a function compare, without an E, there's a function compare, and um, it's going to return an integer that's over here. And it's going to take two const void pointers. So these are the pointers to the elements. So this function is used to compare two elements in the array. And the elements are passed as a const void pointer. This means that it's a pointer to, be, to anything, and the const means you cannot change the elements. So it's constant. And this star here means it's a C function pointer. Um, and you can use these function pointers in Swift. So let's go back at, um, at, uh, at X to Xcode and let's look at what we have here. So the first thing is an unsafe mutable pointer to void. So this needs to be a pointer to this array or rather to the first element of the array. And in Swift they made it very easy. What we can just write is ampersand numbers. So this is almost like in C. And then the second parameter was the number of elements in the array. So we can just say numbers, numbers, count. And then we need the size of a single element. So if you're used to C, you, you know this function size of. This is actually incorrect, but we will see this later on. So this is the size of a single element in memory. And most of the time it works. Uh, I hope I can break it, otherwise I have a problem. So the third is a comparison function, and this is where we need to compare two numbers. So if we press tab and then enter, Xcode will make a block for us. So the block takes two parameters, so the left element and the right element, and it needs to return an int 32, that's here. So for now we can just return zero. And hopefully if we call this and then say print numbers, it will work. I'll do some more new lines so you can read the bottom part. There is an error. And this is also cool about Swift. So if you remember the Q sort, it took an unsafe mutable void pointer. And numbers is not mutable. It's an array that's defined using let. And Swift will help you with this. So it says it cannot pass an immutable value. So and it wants to change numbers to var. And now we can use an unsafe mutable void pointer. So hopefully now this will work. Build field. Cannot, ah, size of numbers. So this should be size of int. It's the size of a single integer. Build succeeded. So it ran the QSort function. It didn't crash. This is already a big achievement. <laughs> and it printed the numbers. And because we returned zero, it didn't compare anything. And it just kept the numbers array in place. So let's compare two elements. Um, another nice trick is to, to option click on a type in Swift and then you can see the, the type. It's now in very tiny letters, but it says unsafe pointer to void. And this is a, so this is a pointer to an integer and um, the type is pointer to void. So if we say something like l.memory, which gets the memory out of the pointer, it's void. So if we need to cast it. And C, there, this is very common to cast things. So we can also do this in Swift. So what we can do, for example, is something like um, L uh, left, for example, which is an unsafe pointer to an integer. And the way we can create this is just saying unsafe pointer and put the L in there. And this is dynamically casting. So this is if you accidentally put something else in the array, this will crash. And this is with a lot of the C stuff. If you make a mistake, you might get a crash at runtime. And we can do the same for right. So right is an unsafe pointer to an integer. And just force cast it. And now what we can do is compare. So we can say something like if left.memory is smaller than right.memory, then we return minus one. Um, if they're the same, then we return zero. And otherwise, we just return one. So hopefully, this will work. And boom, we got a sorted array using the built-in quick sort. So basically, we're done in a way. This is how you can use it. 
uh, let's clean it up a little bit before, um, before we continue. So this dot memory is sort of duplication, so we can remove that. We can say left is, is gonna be an integer, and we just get the memory out here. And let's do the same for right. And now we can just compare left and right. So this is just the same code, just a little bit more cleaned up and a bit shorter. So it still works. Cool. Now let's make it work on arrays of strings. So, ah wait, before we do that, let's make this, wrap this up in a, into a nice function so that we can use it over and over again. So we're gonna create a function quicksort and the input is an array of integers and the output is also an array of integers. So we can maybe move all of this in, inside the function Um, so we now have a quick sort function, which takes some integers, um, but it's still sorting the numbers. To, as an easy way to let the Swift compiler help us, we can comment this out so we get some errors. So here, numbers, we need to replace it with input. We need to say input.count. And then we need to, of course, return something. So we return the modified input. And here we have the same prob problem as we have before. All parameters in Swift are automatically passed in using let. The cool thing about Swift types, uh, especially structs, is they're, they're copied automatically. So this input is already a copy of the original uh, array. So what we can do is just ask Xcode to fix, fix it for us, and it says for our input. So it's a very important thing to notice here that Input, this doesn't mean that it's gonna change the original input array. It means that it's a copy that's a variable, so we can modify this copy. Okay, we can re-enable the numbers, and now we can say something like print quick sort numbers. And just to be sure that it didn't change, I'll print the numbers below so that you can see that the original array is still there. Okay, so it first printed the sorted version, and then it printed the original array. So this is cool, now we have something reusable. How to make it work for strings? Well, the easy way is just to copy paste it and change some things. I like copy pasting. <laughs> so I'm gonna put it below. The original one is still there. And um, let's just make the minimal changes. We say input string, input string. And now the compiler is already happy. Uh, we can just print it. So for example, we could do something like uh, world and world and hello and hello and pass this to quick sort. So hopefully this will crash. Nice, we got a crash. Because the thing is, we forgot to change some of the things inside our quicksort function. And this is a very dangerous thing. When you're working with C APIs, the compiler might be happy, but you might make a mistake. And this will cause runtime crashes because you're accessing memory in the wrong way. So one of the obvious things we did wrong here is we said quicksort input, input.count, and then the size of an int. So it thinks that every element in the array is just the size of an int, and that's of course not right. So we need to say size of string. Now it will calculate the size of the array correctly. And what we can see is now it's sorted it sort of for us. First is world and then world and then hello and hello. So it worked, it didn't crash, but it also didn't really sort it. So what's going on here? Well, this is the thing, we're comparing to integers. We're not comparing strings, so we also need to change that. So let's change this to string, and this to string. And if we scroll down a bit, we can see the comparison function still works. And if we now run it, we have a version that's generic. So um, first, it's, it displays all the capital words, and then it displays the, the lowercase words, and it puts hello before world. So this is a lot of work, and if we want to create a um, quick sort on another type, we'll have to copy paste it again. That's not very cool. So we can use Swift generics. So let's try to make this thing generic. 
So how to do that? So we can say something like quick sort A. And now, um, instead of sorting arrays of A's, instead of uh, sorting arrays of strings, we're going to sort arrays of A's. So already all the code and syntax highlighting is gone. This is not a good sign. Um, we can say size of A and scroll down, say left A and say right A. So it's very black. Build failed. Okay, we, at least we get some colors back. It says binary operator uh, smaller than cannot be used. And this is because we don't know anything about this A. We're trying to so sort an array of A's, and A can be anything. With generic parameters, it means anything. So we need to sort of restrict this A. And let's uh, make this work only on things that are comparable. And this is how you can do that in Swift. So you can say quick sort on A that's comparable. Now at least the errors go away. If we look at comparable, you can see that there is um, these two operators defined. So let's say, let's run it. We get build failed, but there is no error anywhere. <laughs> this is also you, uh, common in Swift, unfortunately, and it's getting better. So what we can do is go here to the build log, and we can see that the compiler is sec faulted. It's a segmentation fault 11. Uh, we can open this up, and we get the entire stack trace. And we now hit a hard limitation of how C APIs work. So inside this quick sort, we just pass a, a Swift function pointer, a closure. And this closure refers to the A. And this A is sort of not inside the closure. It's, it's referring to some kind of generic thing outside of the closure, namely the A parameter. And with C function pointers, you cannot really refer to anything outside. It becomes a little bit clearer if we factor this closure out into a separate function. So I just cut it. And if we say compare for any A that's comparable, what we had is we had two um, unsafe pointers to void. And we needed to return an int32, a C integer. So this is what was inside the closure. I'll remove all the closure bits. And here it's sort of clearer to see this A is passed as a parameter here, as a generic parameter, but it's never used inside the argument. So how to know what kind of A to use? We could write something like this, compare A, but Swift doesn't like this. Build failed. And this is a hard limitation. If you work with C APIs, it's the same thing. You cannot really refer to some kind of comparison function outside of your uh, closure. So I'll undo this. And we have to solve it in a different way. Let me undo. Uh, I think we're back, yes. We have to solve this in a different way. In C, you have the same problem. So let's go back to the manual page. There is a second version of quicksort, qsort b. <laughs> so let's go over the type. So qsort b takes a base void pointer. This is the pointer to the first element of the array. It takes a number of elements. It takes the width. And then it takes a comparison function pointer. However, if you look very closely, you can see that it's a little tiny detail. In the QSort, we had a star. In the QSort B, we have a caret. And this means that it is a block. And if you have a block in Objective-C and also in Swift and in C, you can refer to things outside of the um, closure. So if we change this to QSort B, hopefully it'll work. It built, it ran and it's sorted. And if you remember, we deleted the old string sorting, so now we have a quick sort function that's generic. And it works on any A that's comparable. So or also here we could say, okay, we're done. This is the way to do it. We just use blocks instead of function pointers and everything works. However, we need to make it more complicated. So in this case, it's very simple. So the quick sort has a block-based variant but many of the C APIs you will work with 
will not have block-based APIs. They will work with function pointers. And in order to pass context to function pointers, there is um, a sort of idiom in C that is used. So if you're wrapping any other library in C, you will probably not have this block-based API, but you need to solve it in the third way. So this is the third version of quicksort. So let's go over this again. We have the base pointer, this is the same. We have the number of elements, we have the width, and then we have a void pointer called thunk. And the comparison function also changed. If you can see the type, it's, it's compare, and then it takes a void pointer, and only then it takes these two constant void pointers. So this, what happens if we look for thunk, it says that this thunk takes, it's an additional argument, and it's passed as the first argument to the function pointed to compare. So what happens is, I, I'll go back to the QSOR definition, this thunk pointer, we can put anything in there, and inside our comparison function, we get it back. And this is how it works in many C APIs. If you want to have some kind of context, you can put anything inside the function using a vo void pointer, and then later on, in your callback, you get it back. So let's do this and try to use it. So what I want to do is instead of um, using this QSORT B, I want to use QSORT R, and then I want to pass the comparison function as our thunk. So the comparison function we, we put into our QSORT, and then every time QSORT calls us back, we use this comparison function. Let's do this. I'll um, comment this out for now. And we're going to make a new call to QSort R. So first, we need to put the input in. Then we need to put input.count. Then the size of an integer. And then is our thunk pointer. And we can put anything in here. So we need some kind of comparison function to compare to integers, or to A's, actually. And let's write this comparison function um, in, um, as an extension. So we can save uh, extension. Typing is a bit hard. Uh, as an extension on comparable. And this comparison function is a static function. And it says for any unsafe pointer voids, um, or if any two unsafe pointer voids, I will compare them for you. So this is basically the, the type that we had in the original quicksort. And we can use the same implementation that we had before. So I'll copy and paste this. I'm getting really good at copy and pasting. So I'll copy and paste this in, uncomment it. And now we need to change these A's. So there's this trick in Swift and you can say self. That's basically the current type. So. I think the Swift compiler will be happy about this. Let's see. Something is still wrong. Expected identifier. Oh, yeah, we need to give it a name, of course. Let's call it compare. OK. So what I want to do is I want to pass this comparison function in as our, as our context. And we can use the same trick. We can say a.compare. And this creates a pointer to a.compare, and it will pass it in. And then we need to implement this closure. So again, I will copy and paste this type and, and do it in a separate uh, function. So this is what it wanted. It wanted some kind of closure. Um, so let's call this um, QSort callback, because this is the callback that we get for every element. So this is our thunk. Whoa. OK, sorry. This is our thunk, the first parameter. Then we get the two elements left uh, as an unsafe pointer to void, and right as an unsafe pointer to void. I don't know what the self is doing there. Sorry. So we get the right element. And then we need to return an int32. So let's think a bit about what happens here. So every time we call the QSort R function for any two elements, it calls this function. So we're going to pass this function to the, to the Q sort R. And we get this unsafe mutable pointer to void, which is 
our comparison function, and we get two elements. So the first thing we need to do is to cast this, this function pointer back to a function. So let's look at the type. This is the type we want to have. I'll copy and paste it. Uh, where's my cursor? Yes. So what we want to have is this comparison function. We want to cast it back. So we can just say let compare, and it has this type. And then we need to say equals unsafe pointer. So this is a force cast of the tongue.memory. So this is the same pattern as we used before with the elements. You sort of cast it to the right type, and then you get the memory out. And now we can just call compare on left, left, and right. And we need to return the result of compare. So hopefully, ah, yeah, we get nice errors. So let's see. The syntax is wrong because I copy-pasted it. We still get an error. Um, let's see. Maybe we can remove this part and this part. I'm not sure what's, what's, what's wrong now. The parents after in 32. Yes. Ah, yeah, there it is. Live coding is very hard sometimes. Um, so we can remove this. OK, it's happy about this part. And now we need to pass this comparison function in as the last, this callback, uh, as the last parameter. So we call qsortr with the input, with the input.count. We call it with the size of an integer. And then we pass the comparison function in and the callback. And the comparison function is our thunk. So this is this void pointer. And the callback receives the thunk and compares the two integers. There is one more tiny mistake. And it's going to complain about this a.compare. Because it's a function on, it's an extension on our, on our um, comparable category. And if we look at the API, you can see here it takes a void pointer to thunk. And this means that it's a, it gets imported into Swift as an unsafe mutable void pointer. However, a function ex extension of a category is not really mutable. Uh, we know how to solve this. We just put it into a variable. So let's create a new variable, compare. And it's a.compare. And now we can pass this compare variable in. OK. Let's see. There is an, an extra comma, yes. So it looks like all the errors are gone now. We can try to run this. Hopefully, it will not crash. Ha. Huh. I didn't. Yes. Yes. This should be size of A. Thank you. So now we did everything right. So you see, hello world, hello world, hello world, hello world. So this is great. What we did now is we used um, a very arcane API with void pointers and thunks, and we wrapped it into Swift. And this, is, this can be very useful, because if you have a C API that implements some kind of data structure, uh, that you want or something else that does something, you can now use it in Swift. You have to be very careful, as you see, when you wrap it, because if any time you do make any tiny mistake with memory, it will crash. So you need to be very careful. But once you've done this, it's actually very simple to use, which is just call quick sort on an array. So you do this once, you spend a lot of time. For me to figure out how to do this took me days rather than 20 minutes. But once you know how to do it, and once you can use these techniques, you can use all the existing C APIs and use them in your Swift code in a nice way. So let's wrap this up and make it a little bit nicer and a little bit more Swifty. This is the easy part, hopefully. We have now quicksort as a top level function. But if you remember, before on the array, we called array.sort. So let's make, um, 
make this happen so that we can call quick sort on an array. So what we can do is write an extension on array. And then we're just going to put this quick sort in there. So now we have quick sort as an extension. And the type is still wrong. So here we say a comparable. Well, we don't need this. The input is now self. So we can remove the input parameter, and we're going to return an array of elements. If you look at the type of array, you can see that, the, that it has elements. It's generic over elements. Now, the only thing is we need to say that these elements are comparable somehow, the elements in the array. And we can also do that in extensions, and we can just say where elements is comparable. Comparable. We're almost done. So it needs this input. So as a first start, we can just say var input equals self. And now the size of should be element. And the comparison function, the a should also be element.compare. <coughs> the compiler seems happy. We can call quick sort on our, on our strings array and see if it still works. So it's still sorted. And now it's a much nicer API. This feels native to Swift. Um, and just to be, make sure, we can also call it on our numbers array. And it also quick sorts the numbers. If you remember, the sorting also had a sort in place function. And that would be also nice to have this, so that we can say something like this. Uh, numbers sort in place, but then for quick sort, so call it quick sort in place. So how to do that? That's also not too hard once you know how to do it. So we can create a mutating function um, called quick sort in place. Um, I'll, I'll leave off the mutating func the mutating keyword, so that you can see that Swift will help us with this. So let me just copy paste the code. We'll clean it up, I promise. So instead of sorting the input, we just want to sort self. So I'm removing input and I'm writing self everywhere. Self.count. And we don't need to return anything because we're sorting in place. Now the compiler will complain, cannot pass immutable value, and it proposes a fix. Mark the method as mutating. So this is cool. If we mark a method as mutating, we can modify the original array. And now we can delete the code from our quick sort function. We can delete this boilerplate and just say input.quicksort in place. So we have nice sharing of the code. So let's see if our quick original quick sort still works numbers.quicksort, and we can now also say numbers.quicksort in place, and it mutates the original value. So now the numbers is mutated. Okay, I, if you remember in the beginning, I said there's one more error in the code, and that's the size of. And as you've seen, this was not a problem. We sorted arrays of numbers, we sorted arrays of strings, and everything just worked. So let's fix this. Let's First, try to break the code, and then try to repair it. So I'm going to create a new struct person, and the name is a string, and it also has an age, which is an op optional integer, and I'll just put 30 in there. So now we can create a new array, uh, people, and we're going to put some person values in there. And maybe this one is the, the middle one is different. Um, test and the age is nil. So oh, there's some error. Whoa, that's not what I want. Sorry? Did I hit what? Create a new line. Maybe. 
I don't think so, but maybe, yeah. Hmm. X argument name. Oh, it doesn't want this argument. Oh, and these needs to be they, these need to be var. Sorry. Okay. Now it's gonna work. This was the mistake. So now we have a person with a name and an age. So the array works. And in order to compare people, we have to make um, person an instance of comparable, or rather conform to comparable. So we need to write two functions. One to compare to see if they're smaller than each other um, and the right person. And this needs to return a bool. So I don't know what's a sensible way to compare, so for now I'll just return nil, uh, return false. And we need to do the same thing to check if two people are equal. Um, and once we have this, we can say that um, a person is comparable. So now we can say extension person comparable. And now let's try to sort the people. We need to make it a variable. And I hope we will get a hard crash. Nice, we get a bad access. So what's going on here? We did everything right. We wrote self and we have the right size off, but something still went wrong. So let's go back to our quick sort in place. This is something you cannot know by just looking at the presentation and unfortunately not something you can really know by reading the documentation. Uh, it's just something you have to know somehow. Be somebody told me, actually. So the problem is that size off, most of the time it's correct, but it um, doesn't include any platform specific bytes. So on different platforms it might be slightly different. And um, preferred Swift idiom is to use stride off. This includes any bytes that are appended specific for the platform. So this is an important thing when you're working with C APIs, never use size off where you would have used size off in C code, but always use stride off. I cannot give you a better explanation than you have to know this. I didn't in the, be in the beginning and it would crash som sometimes. Um, so if we use stride off, everything will work. We have our sorted um, numbers still. We can still sort strings. Um, quick sort. And we can sort people. So this is a very good thing to know, I think. Um, I hope they will improve this in the future, maybe. So what did we do? Let's recap. We started with a very simple invocation of QSort. We just sorted some numbers. This was simple. Then we put it into a function and made it work on any array of numbers. This was also simple. The moment we started making it generic, things got really complicated. The blocks were still relatively okay, but once we needed to use this QSort R strategy with the void pointer, things got a bit magical. However, this is a very common pattern in C libraries, and anytime you want to wrap a C library, you can use this technique. And you might also think, why would I ever want to wrap a C library? Well, I think that once Swift is open source, we want to run it on multiple platforms, for example, on Linux. And on Linux, we probably, I don't know, we probably will not have access to all the um, Apple frameworks that, uh, that exist on uh, Cocoa and on iOS. So all of a sudden, we will need to wrap frameworks, maybe for networking, maybe for drawing things, uh, maybe other things. And then it will become very important if you, th that you know how to work with C libraries. So that's why I think this can be very useful um, maybe in a few months, um, already today if you want to wrap C. That's all I have to say and I'm very happy to take any questions. Thanks. <laughs> Hi. So if I understood this correctly, the QSOR function is the actual C function 
that you call from Swift, and Swift automatically wraps uh, the pointer to void in unsafe mutable pointer. Absolutely. So if you want to include in your project uh, your C functions and your C libraries, you just need to you know, copy uh, the files and uh, they will be available to Swift yeah, inside the same module. Yeah, it's similar as including Objective-C uh, from your Swift. OK. Yeah. That's, that's it. Yeah, good question. Um, so say you have a C library and you only have API that exposes function pointers and you don't have any block API or any thunk API, uh, are you completely out of luck or can you still yes. pass some context in? If there's no thunks, if there, so many, many C APIs allow you to pass something like a thunk. It's often called context or um, uh, there are many different names. It's a very common pattern, but if it doesn't, if it doesn't exist, you're basically out of luck. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Sorry. <laughs> live with it. Maybe they can change it. I don't know. Maybe they will can implement this in Swift. I, I'm not an expert enough to answer that. Maybe at the back, Marin. Hey, Chris. That was unexpected, but really awesome to watch through. Uh, I, me and a few other speakers were talking that uh, in, in technical talks, especially, we need more feelings. So I wanted to ask you, um, what was your motivation to look into this? How did you feel when you first experienced it, and how did it make you feel in the end? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a good point. I'm not even joking. I'm seeing a therapist to learn to talk about my feelings. <laughs> so it's a very, it's very on point. Um, how did I feel? So okay, let's start with the motivation. So the motivation for me. I, so normally I would not really use C libraries, but when they open source Swift, I already started thinking about, hey, this could be interesting. And at the same time, I teamed up with Airspeed Velocity to write a new book on Swift. And then with, well, no, this was actually before the open sourcing that we decided to write a book. And then they open sourced it and I realized, oh my God, we're gonna have Swift everywhere. And on most of these platforms, we will not have Apple's frameworks available unless they release it. So then we really need to, for example, on Linux, I would love to write Swift on Linux, you know, write my backends in Swift. This could be awesome, but I'll need to wrap the APIs. So I'll need to learn how to wrap C APIs. And therefore in our book, um, we decided to double down on, on um, C interfacing with C. So this is, this is sort of the easy part. If you work with C APIs that are asynchronous, you need to do, think a lot harder about memory management because you need to somehow retain things and make sure they don't go uh, uh, out of memory when, when you're out of scope. So yeah, so once I started, in the beginning I was very intimidated. You know, I don't know if you ever, for example, as a beginner tried to learn OpenGL, this is like massively complex. Well, look into the API and you will be overwhelmed. If you're an experienced developer and you look at something like OpenGL, you're like, oh my God, this is too difficult for me. I don't know how to do this. I'll go back to you know, normal things. For me, <laughs> working, with, working with C can be like that. If you read the C book, the Kerningen and Ritchie one, it's very simple, but if you actually work with C APIs, there are so many differences between libraries and it can be super intimidating. And I was never a full-time C programmer, so it is intimidating for me. So that's how I felt, intimidated. But then as I realized that there's only a few techniques you need to master to wrap these APIs and implement them in Swift, I felt really powerful. And now I know that I can work with almost any C library and just you know, use it in Swift. Um, I write the wrapper once, I test it thoroughly, and then I have all this functionality and there's so many great C libraries out there. Um, so now I feel empowered. Yeah, thanks. It's a therapy session. <laughs> more questions. I promise I won't talk more about my therapy. <laughs> yeah, hi, Chris, nice talk. Um, you presented a way to wrap C libraries but recently, um, a nice project in GitHub showed up called Swift Go, that basically bridge Go and Swift, mm -hmm. and it seems very promising. What's your opinion about actually going over or checking what else is available and wrap Swift around it like Go? Yeah, so the Swift Go people, I, I, 
I don't know exactly what they did, but if, if, if I recall correctly, they wrapped sort of the library that, um, that powers Go, not Go itself, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I think this is very powerful because now you can use this. So uh, sorry for the advertising, but in our book, we wrap LibUV, which is the library that powers Node.js. And it's sort of like, it's a little bit like Grand Central Dispatch. Um, so if Apple doesn't make Grand Central Dispatch available on, um, on Linux, I think it is, but if, there's, if it's somehow complicated to work with, then now we can use the LibUV wrapper. Um, and I think it's super powerful. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy to see more people wrapping C libraries in Swift. And you know, if, in a way, if you don't have to do it, it's even easier if somebody else does it for you. So if you can just pod install and it works, that's perfect. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's a really good, I think it's a really good thing that people are doing this. Okay. Uh, we are run out of time, so thank you. Thanks. Great talk. <laughs>